Hello everyone, this is SG DeVries, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I built my lifting table here from a single sheet of plywood. If you watch YouTube videos, you will probably recognize a table similar to this, because this table was heavily inspired by Marius Hornberger's lifting table. There are a few differences in mine, because I needed to keep the budget a little bit cheaper, and I didn't have access to some of the tools. But, um, so the major difference, of course, is I built mine out of plywood instead of ash, and I also had to use plastic bushings and smaller bolts and things like that. Um, but I think it turned out pretty well. Now, because of some of those things, you can see there's a little bit of flex to it. Um, you know, there's a little bit of wobble if I really twist on it. But all in all, it has been incredibly useful. So, I'll show you how I did it. The first thing I had to do was spend a lot of time at the computer and then develop a detailed cutting plan. You can see I barely made it onto that single sheet of plywood. With the cutting plan finished, I can rip down the sheet of plywood into all the parts. The table has a top and a bottom frame. So I'm laying out one of the frames right now, but everything that you see I'm actually doing twice. To begin assembly, I start by gluing these long narrow rails onto the long side rails. These rails are what the wheels will ride on on both the top and the bottom. When the glue is dry, I drill a series of holes and glue in wood dowels. The wheels will actually ride on a 1 8 inch thick aluminum bar, but that bar is a little bit wider than the plywood, so I have to cut a groove down the long rails so that I can epoxy it into place. I don't use epoxy that much, so I don't actually know if I'm mixing enough here, but I didn't want to drill holes in the aluminum rail and countersink screws because I didn't want those bumps along where the wheels have to ride, so I'm just taking my best stab at it and hope it turns out alright. The end pieces of both frames also get glued, drilled, and pinned. Now it's time to glue together the two frames. I want to make sure these frames are nice and square, so I make sure to take my time in laying everything out ahead of time before putting any glue on them. And also after the glue is on, while it's still wet, I can adjust things. The bottom frame also gets these rectangular blocks glued on at each corner. Now these blocks serve two purposes, both to reinforce the frame corners, and also they'll serve as mounting blocks for the wheels that we'll install later. Yep, more drilling, more gluing and wood pins. Since this table is built out of plywood, I want to make sure that I reinforce all the joints and corners really well. This probably isn't even half of the wood pins that I've put into this thing. I make sure that I get in pins from all different directions, the sides and also up from the bottom. It doesn't take long time to do, and it really helps reinforce those corners. Yeah, maybe I went a little overboard on the wood dowel pins. Now, you don't want to see me cut all these and sand them down. That would be kind of boring. So I think we'll just make them, whoa, magically appear done. You can see that I've also drilled holes in the top frame for the lead screw that'll go in later. Now that the frames are done, I can build the scissor arms. Now my method of making sure all the holes align require that I locate the center point very exactly on one of these pieces. So I've located the holes on one of the boards and I've taped two of them together. I start by drilling the center hole through both boards. Then I move to one of the ends and also drill one of the end holes through both boards, but not the other end. With the center and one of the end holes drilled through both boards, I take the tape off and I use a temporary pin through the center hole. 
What this allows me to do then is to rotate the top board. Now they align top to bottom, which is why I needed that center hole so accurately drilled. So after rotating the board, I retape the parts together and I go back to the drill press and use the hole through the single board on each end now to drill the hole through the other board. Does that make sense? Now, not only do these holes, the two boards align with each other, the two holes also align side to side. So I can take these off and I should be able to flip this around again and everything will line up perfectly. And awesome. Worked. Shaping the scissor arms is a fairly straightforward process. I drew the shape on the top one that I also located my holes on. And so I'll just cut out and sand that one and then use that as a template for all the rest of them. So that the threads of my bolts don't tear up that soft plywood, I'm going to fit a plastic bushing into each of the holes. Now the outer diameter is already correct, but the inner diameter needs to be drilled slightly larger. This is just small sections of PEX tubing that you might use on a water filter under your sink. The holes that the wheels have to fit through have to be drilled slightly larger. You can see that the wheels I'm using have a wider collar right behind the wheel itself. These are just wheels that you would buy to replace a broken wheel on your garage door. They're fairly cheap and they have the bearing already installed onto a shaft. A pin set in my waste block centers the parts underneath the drill press and I can just drill these to the larger size I need. The scissor arms will be held to the top and the bottom frame by a series of brackets. Here I just have my drill press fence set up to drill the first one, and then I can drill the rest of them without even marking them. A series of spacers and washers sets the correct location for the brackets on the frames. For the brackets on the top frame, I need to drill a hole through the side of the frame so that I can access the nut that goes through those brackets. So here I just clamped on a guide block to make sure that my bigger hole went in exactly the right place. Braces are also glued and pinned in between the inner sets of scissor lift arms. At this point, I have to confess that what you've seen over most of the last minute, I ended up having to cut apart and redo. I did a test assembly at this point and found that it was just too flimsy. You can see here now that I have the double thickness scissor lift arms. Those are basically two arms glued together and also drilled and pinned together. The assembly process is the same with all the brackets, but I had to cut them off because the spacing changed on all of them. I also doubled up the braces that went between the inner sets of scissor lift arms and doubled those up and pinned and made those stronger too. Now that I've fixed the structural problems with my table, I can go on to building the carriage that travels back and forth on the lead screw. This carriage is made from three sheets of three quarter inch plywood 
that I'll glue together after I embed a nut and a washer in them to make it stronger. A center hole that will accommodate the lead screw goes all the way through all three parts. And then in one of the boards, I use a Forstner bit to make a shallow indentation that my large washer will fit into. This gives it extra support for when the nut pulls against it. It's not pulling against wood, but it's pulling against the steel of the washer, which spreads out the load. A spare piece of threaded rod through the nut and the washer will keep everything aligned while the glue is drying. This carriage needs to have a hole drilled in each end to accept the wheel shafts. Now my drill press doesn't have enough vertical clearance and my lathe doesn't have enough space either, so I'm building this guide block that I can clamp onto the end of the carriage to guide the drill bit. And now I'm using a really funny arrangement here because the chuck on my drill isn't big enough to accept the drill bit. And so I need to actually use a spare chuck from my lathe clamped into my drill to drill this hole. It's a bit clumsy, but it did work. And by now I guess it's no surprise that I'm also drilling and gluing in pins to reinforce those ends. The long lead screw shaft is guided by a bearing at each end. Now the tail end bearing that you see here is just a regular straight bearing that can get embedded into this block of wood. I just drill a hole in it and then I have to sand it out a little bit to make it big enough for the bearing. After a little bit of shaping I can glue this bearing block onto the table. I just use a dowel through the lead screw holes just to make sure that everything stays aligned straight while the glue dries. The bearing on the front end of the lead screw is a tapered bearing which can accept radial and axial loads. Now this one also gets mounted into a block of wood, but it's a little bit more complicated than the other bearing because this one actually extends out past this metal collar in the back, and so you need to have clearance. You can see here when I did my test assembly how badly the back of that bearing pushed into the plywood. So to solve this problem, I ended up building two hardwood collars that get mounted into the block of wood, and then the bearing will sit inside those hardwood collars. That way all the force is pushing against the hardwood rather than that soft plywood. You can see here that I have that other bearing block also mounted to the table. Now I have the whole table upside down on my work table so that I can position the top onto it. And I'm just tracing around it so I can offset my tracing line so that I can screw it right into the center of the plywood frame below. And while I have this thing upside down on my work table, I decided to go ahead and mount the casters also. For the tabletop, I then offset my line and drilled a whole series of holes through it, then turned it over and countersunk those holes so that I can screw it in through the top. Now by this point I brought it out into my garage so I had a little more space to work. And now I can just screw through those holes, through the countersunk holes, right into the frame below. On top, I'm going to mount a quarter inch thick hardboard wear surface so that I can always replace that in case I spill something or I scratch it up really bad. It's a lot easier than trying to sand something out of the plywood tabletop. <laughs> 
For the lead screw, I'm using a piece of three quarter inch diameter by 10 threads per inch threaded rod. And man, that takes a long time to cut through with a hacksaw. The tail end of the lead screw is held in place by two nuts and a lock washer in between. This end doesn't have to undergo any stress, it's just to hold it in place. The head end has three nuts held in place by two lock washers, and the crank will attach to the middle nut, which can't move, turn either forward or backwards because of the lock nuts on the other two nuts. At its lowest, the top of the table is 16 and a half inches above the floor. I haven't actually built a handle for this. I've had this table done for several months and wanted to get the video done, so I'm actually still using a vice grips that's clamped onto that nut. The top of the table here is at 70 and 1 half inches. It could go a little higher, but this is about as high as I'd want to take it. A couple things I've used this for is I have taken down a garage heater, which didn't work anymore. That was mounted to the ceiling of my garage. That weighs about 100 pounds, and it was only 11 degrees out. And you can see that I have to reposition that vice grips every so often because of the overhang. But the table works really great. The reason I built this table to begin with was so that I could hang kitchen cabinets all by myself, and it works just fabulous for that. So that's my lifting table. I've gotten a lot of use out of it, and all total it cost probably about $100. Thanks for watching.